Kansas State University, the architect of perhaps the greatest coaching job of our generation, Coach Bill Snyder from Kansas State. His record is 187, 94 and 1, 66 and a half percent and still counting, but the numbers don't do justice to what Bill Snyder has accomplished in his career. He becomes only the fourth coach to earn induction into the College Football Hall of Fame while still actively leading a po program joining Bobby Bowden, John Gallardi, and Joe Paterno. The miracle in Manhattan, I mean, when Bill Snyder took over Kansas State, people thought that there was no way you could turn that program around. Instead, he's made it, made it a national brand and a perennial contender for conference and national honors. He holds a distinction as the winningest coach in Kansas State history, amassing more than four times the number of victories than the person who ranks second on the list. And he claims a spot as the 14th fastest coach in college football history to win 100 games. Two Big 12 championships, 16 of the school's 18 bowl appearances have come under the watch of Bill Snyder. Big 8 and Big 12 Coach of the Year a combined seven times and finished in the top 20 a dozen times. Coach Bill Snyder, congratulations, now a member of the Hall of Fame. A round of applause for all of our Hall of Fame class. And now from Kansas State, Coach Bill Snyder. Coach, you obviously have been uh, engrossed with the season in which you guys had a, a tremendous season. What were you doing? How did you find out that, that you were a member of this Hall of Fame class? Well, again, a, a call from Steve Hatchell, who I have a great appreciation for, <clears throat> along with the Foundation and Football Hall of Fame. Uh, I was sitting in my office, really, uh, when, uh, when the call came. And... Uh, you know, people have, uh, when we were nominated, you know, several months ago, uh, I was asked at the time, you know, what, what my thoughts were, you know, what thoughts went through my head. And uh, when I received the call from Steve that, uh, indeed, I had been accepted. Uh, and I'm awful grateful that the voting took place before the bowl game as well. Uh, but... Uh, you know, my thoughts were the same on both occasions. Uh, you know, you just think of, uh, of all the people that have invested so much. You know, my family, my wife is here uh, with me today, uh, Sharon and my son, Sean, and have three other children, uh, Shannon and Meredith and uh, Ross, and they have been such a tremendous inspiration to me, each and every one of them, and, and have sacrificed so much. You know, and you think, uh, you think about those things, you know, and as was said a moment ago, you know, this isn't a, uh, an individual honor, uh, at least I don't think any of us receive it that way. Uh, so many people invested so much in giving me the opportunity just to progress over a, you know, a period of time, and it goes way back to, you know, I, I had a mother that, you know, I would never be in this room without what my mother invested in me and my grandfather and uh, coaches along the way, and certainly, you know, as a coach, you have to reflect on, uh, you know, the wonderful coaches that you've had with you, and I've had so many, and the wonderful players, you know, as as young gentlemen, and uh, certainly as competitive players on the football field, and a and a staff, uh, tremendous administration that we have had, both uh, athletically and and central, uh, both past and present, and. Uh, you know, and the wonderful, wonderful fan base that we have at Kansas State University. And Reese, you, you know, you've commented on it uh, numerous uh, occasions. And, uh, you know, they have been so fantastic. You know, the people of Manhattan, the community of our faculty and, and our tremendous student body. I mean, those were sincere and honest thoughts, you know, that went through my mind when, you know, I received both of those calls. And uh, just... You know, extremely fortunate to have the opportunity to be here. Very humbling, and uh, just makes you think back. Uh, you know, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, so many wonderful things wouldn't have happened in my life without all those people that I that I shared, and and many that I'm sure that I've left out. It's not my intention at all to make you uncomfortable, and I have a feeling that this question, at least to some degree, will from the time that I've spent around you. I've said it publicly, and I'm certainly not the only one. Many people in this room have. They believe that in terms of a pure coaching job, as I do, that the success you had at Kansas State is the greatest pure coaching job, perhaps in the history of college football, in terms of turning a program around. How would you describe why you were able to be successful 
at a place when no one else had been. You know, there, there really had been recent, and you've heard me say this, there had been some very talented coaches there before. You know, I don't think it was a, a coaching thing. I, I was blessed to have, uh, just go back to what I said a little bit earlier, I was just blessed to have wonderful people uh, in our program. When we went there, we had, uh, that's when you could have 95 on scholarship. You know, it had come down from 105 and continued to decline, but uh, we could, you could have 95. We had 47 on scholarship at the, at the time. We were less than 50% scholarship, lowest number in the, in the country. And, you know, the young people that, that stayed in the program, the young people that came to the program, uh, tremendous help from our administration, uh, and, and having wonderful, wonderful coaches. You know, it was just an investment of a lot of people that said we can be better than this, and we, you know, we aspired to do the very best that we could, and uh, by having wonderful people around you, it, uh, you know, makes the, makes the opportunity exist, and, and it certainly did, and, and they took advantage of it. Well, Coach, thank you very much. I, I checked the time. We have about 10 to 15 minutes for questions from the audience, I'd like to ask that I think we have some microphones, some house mics, so if you'd wait until the microphone gets to you so everyone can hear you quickly. The lights are shining at me a little bit, so I'll try to pick out people who raise their hands. Who, who has the first question for anyone here on the podium? Ivan? Hey, Bill, Ivan Mazel, congratulations. Uh, Obviously, when you got to Kansas State, you didn't think, well, in 25 years, I'll be in the Hall of Fame. But given what you took over, what was your goal when you got there? Well, uh, thank you very much. It has always been, never has really changed. And, you know, we have a, a set of principles or a set of values that we try to aspire to. And all I'd ask of the young people in our program was, <clears throat> to invest themselves in finding a way each and every day of their lives to become better people and better students and better football athletes. And, and improvement was, was our goal. Uh, always has been, always, uh, always will be. And, uh, you know, it was interesting, too, because in the first year that we were there, uh, we ended the season as a 1-10 in 10 football team. It was first, there wasn't a player in our program that had ever participated in a game in which they had won. And so that was their first victory. And at the end of the season, you know, being a one in 10 football team, you know, every friend that I have, uh, few as they may be, uh, contacted me and said, you need to leave as quickly as you possibly can. You know, if something bad is gonna happen if you don't. And I, and I remember the statement that I made publicly and privately as well. I had never been more convinced that Kansas State University could be a successful program uh, based on the fact that we had made gradual improvement, as did our players individually and collectively, throughout the course of the season. We just got a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And as I said to our players before the season, you know, I was just honest, and it doesn't sound like, you know, a great coaching strategy, but, you know, I said, I'm, I'm not going to make any judgments based on the scoreboard. And we're going to make judgments on uh, how well we improve the things that, that we do and the things that are important. So uh, they took that to heart, and, and improvement uh, continued, you know, throughout, you know, the course of our time there. So a, a lot of wonderful people to uh, appreciate for that. Yes. Back here in the back, Bill. Uh, as someone who's coached against and had to game plan for Marcus Mariota and the Oregon offense and the team in general, what advice would you give to Urban Meyer as we approach the game here? Uh, get 14 guys on the field. <laughs> uh, you know, he's uh, uh, a young man is a very, very talented individual, uh, and they have a lot of talent, but Ohio State does as well. It'll be, you know, certainly an interesting ball game, but – you know, the speed of the game, you know, is, changes, you know, year in and year out. And uh, Oregon's a, a football team that has enhanced their speed year in and year out. And, uh, and they play, you know, so very, very fast. And, uh, you know, whatever you can do to slow the ball game down certainly is beneficial. You know, when we played them, we didn't slow it down very much. They scored on the first snap of the game. Uh, but, 
uh, over a period of time, we, you know, we got back into it to a certain degree. But a uh, very talented team, and uh, Urban needs none of my advice whatsoever. He's doing quite well on his own. We have time for one more question. Yes, ma'am. As Phil's wife, I have just one question. He is very good at math. I used to be a math teacher. However, I need to remind him that we have five children. Do you know who the youngest one is? I, you know, I was just thinking about that. I don't know who I missed, but uh, the, I, I, it may have been Whitney and Ross. Uh, Whitney was a, a great equestrian rider at Kansas State University, and I'm paying for horses right now, and, hey, and yeah, Ross yeah. played for us at uh, Kansas State <laughs> University, and uh, if they're listening out there, I immensely apologize, because they're as meaningful as our family as anybody. Thank you, my dear wife. <laughs> Bill, it is my job as a host, as I hope that Coach Holtz and some of the other guys will tell you, that when you have those occasional slips, that I'm supposed to cover that up. So it's my fault, not his. Not today, all right? Not, another day, it's all on him. But today, let it be on me. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations to all of you. I'd like to, all of you to join me now in congratulating the entire 2015 College Football Hall of Fame class. We have a special thanks to Coach Snyder and Lincoln Kennedy and Bob Brunig and Brian Bosworth for being here. Thanks also to the College Football Playoff Executive Director, Bill Hancock, and his entire staff for making today possible, kicking off this new tradition. Thanks to everybody for coming and for watching digital broadcasts on the National Football Foundation website. The release is available, www.footballfoundation.org.